Greetings, I'm Shelly Sally and I teach art at East High School. Today I'm going to show you a couple of tricks um, and something fun to do with something everyone has, which is a cell phone. If you have a DSLR or a little point shoot camera, you can also use that as a tool to capture imagery, but I'm going with what most people have is a cell phone. The things that you need in order to do toy photography is you need a bag of toys and I have rated uh, my daughter what is left of the toys we have in our house. It can be a variety of things. I would make sure that when you're doing a toy you want to be thinking something on a small scale, not something that is big. So you want to be working small. Since I teach high school I have a lot of kids that say, hey miss, I don't have toys anymore. And I'm like, that's great. And I have a lot of people who will make a toy. The main thing is is that number one you're having fun and that you're keeping your mind active and you're engaging and you're seeing things differently and you're telling a story. So when you're working in toy photography there are two important tips. Number one you need to have a story. You need to say, think of what, what am I going to shoot and what is it going to be about. So if I have a little toy tiger Obviously, I'm going to be telling a story of something with an animal. If I'm doing a figurine that has no facial features, then I'm able to be a little more broad with the kind of story I'm going to tell. Um, so you need to be thinking about what story do you want to tell with your photography and your artwork. The second thing is, is that you're going to need to make them feel big and make them feel like a human so that as a viewer I am connecting with it in a, uh, a way that I'm like, hey, I could be in that same kind of situation. So I've got a couple of things here. I'm going to, to set up and I ha I'm going to take just a few of these little toys and I've got a, looks like a, a, a figure here and I've got a little tiny couch. So I'm just gonna put them two together and I'm gonna create kind of a scene that I want to photograph. Now, right now I have the backdrop of a curtain. What I recommend you doing is going outside. It's kind of neat if you, if you think of like senior pictures or when people do really interesting things and you want to look at the photo, they might take the figure and put them in different locations. So standing in this spot right here, this might not be the best or the most interesting, but you can take these two figurines and put them anywhere outside or anywhere on your house, in your house, and you can put them and you can create your own photo shoot. I want to move and show you a couple of tricks on your camera. So all you need is a camera and we're just going to focus on these two items right here. So I am going to, for the demonstration, we are going to turn the lights off. I also have a couple of flashlights because you're working on a smaller setting. You're going to want to have good light. So you could be using flashlights. You could even have a sibling or a friend shine another flashlight on so that you can get some dramatic looks with the, with the, with the light. Uh, but for right now, what we're going to do is we're going to turn the lights down and we're going to come over and we're going to play around with this scenario and what it looks like when we're shooting. So as you can see, we've turned the house lights off and we are completely dark. I am going to be using a flashlight and it's something that I just, we keep in our kitchen just for in case of emergencies. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. And I'm going to use that so that I can play around with the light. And again, I want to remind you that we have it here on the table, but I encourage you when you're doing this at home, uh, feel free to experiment. Go and put it out in the front lawn, put it on the concrete, put it somewhere else in your house, because not only is it going to matter what is on what you are sitting on, but also what is in the background. So when I turn my phone on, you can shoot in just regular mode or you can shoot in portrait mode. I am not shooting in portrait mode right now. I am just going to put it here um, on my, my regular settings. And I wanna show you a couple things. So I can put my phone right here. And remember I was saying there are two tricks when you're doing toy photography. Number one, you need to have it tell a story. And number two, you need to make it feel big. Right here, I'm shooting it and the further I get away, the further it makes it look really tiny. And sometimes that tiny thing could be interesting in your visual story, but I'm really wanting to make mine look big. So I can come over and I can play with this. 
the one trick, and it's a secret that I tell my students, so don't tell anyone, that your camera, your lens is right here. And you can see, I'm gonna move the light so that you can see the lens is right here. And if I put my phone right here, the lens is shooting out into no land. If I took this and I moved my camera upside down and I put it this way, I can get up close to my cam or the camera can get up close to the subject. And by now I'm now making it feel and look big. So with this light, and remember I was telling you, it doesn't, it also matters what is on the bottom, what you're sitting on, as well as what is in the background. So right now I'm making it feel very the theatrical with having the different colors in the curtain behind me. But you can play around with that. It also depends on how you have the light. I can move the light so that it is in the front. I can move the flashlight so it is off to the side. I can move my flashlight so that it is up on top and so I'm having kind of a spotlight look. Or I could even move it over here and have it on this side. So each time you move the light, it's going to give a dramatic effect. It's gonna look differently. And I don't know, sometimes this works, but you could even put it in the back and you can have a little bit of backlighting. Does that show backlighting? Yeah, so you can play around with the backlighting and sometimes you can get a really cool silhouette and you can play around and figure out which one you like. So I'm gonna go ahead and start taking a couple of photographs and I am looking at a vertical photo. If I wanna turn it and do a horizontal, just remember that your lens is here. So if you turn it this way, you're gonna shoot off above the shoulder. But if you take it and you turn it this way, you can play around with making it right up next and you can see the ground and you can see above. And so you're giving yourself a ground figure relationship. And I'm gonna move around this way and I want to move my flashlight back on this side and I'm gonna take a picture. And if you see that sometimes it turns around um, or it makes the folk, the camera have a little bit funky focus. If you can just press and it'll meter off of the figure. If I wanted to come over here and meter off that side, you can see that it made over here brighter. Another trick would be, I'm gonna move this over here. I am going to meter off of the figure and I can play around with this effect just by moving and metering up. And this is the same on both an Apple and an Android. So you can play around with that. I am all about not just doing one photo, but trying multiple. So now I'm just gonna try putting this figure here on the couch. And I'm gonna put a cute little dog off to the side. For any of my students, they know that I am a pug fan all the way. And so the fact that we can put a little pug in there makes me happy. So I can play around and I can now have the figure sitting on the couch. And this is where you as the artist, you can figure out what looks good. And in my brain, I was like, hey, this is gonna look awesome, but sometimes it doesn't. But that's okay, you can take the photo and then you can go through. And I recommend if you're doing a photo shoot, always do like a roll of film, which is about 36 photos. And then you can go through and weed out the ones that you like and you don't like. So maybe I wanna get rid of this couch and I wanna just do the figure with the dog. And I can come in and again, it's the same thing. I'm putting the camera here and I am able to move around and experiment with the kind of light that I want. And again, you can maybe play around with some backlighting, um, making it dramatic. This is where you get to have fun. Ooh, and I like that one. I'm gonna go ahead and shoot that because I can see a little bit of shadow over there by the hand. I also want to come over and show you that little figurine that we made out of paper clips. So I'm going to move my Lego away and I'm going to bring my paper clip little figurine. And it's got some pretty fun little shadows and when I'm shooting I can play around with that. The only thing about shooting a figurine like this that you have to be careful with is that you're always going to have your finger in the shot and I think that distracts from the actual photograph so like if you see my finger in there holding it 
I'm automatically making my figure look small again. And I'm gonna move around so you can see right there. By me putting my finger in, you're making it look like a little tiny figurine. So this is where you can be creative. Maybe you can bring that couch and you can use the couch to help prop it. And you can play around with how that figurine is going to look. And I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get it. Ah, it's hanging off the ledge there. And that might be something that's interesting. Oh, hey, that's kind of cool. And then maybe you're gonna be like, hey, I need to go out and I need to play around and do something else. And then you can even have it propped up against another, um, another object. This is my other flashlight. I'm gonna say that might not be the best, but this is part of you experimenting as an artist and not always knowing what's going to work the first time. And, it, and so you could play around with it. So to me, I don't know if I like the flashlight, but that's okay. I played around. I can say, hey, I'm gonna take a picture and I'm gonna move it around. So we're gonna turn the lights back on and we're gonna finish this up. All right, so as a conclusion, I just wanna like recap a couple of things that I feel are important when you are shooting and you are doing photography. Um, the number one thing is you have to have a visual story. So whether you are using a, a hand-created masterpiece like this one, or you are using little tiny animals, or maybe you are using Hot Wheels, I've had several people, because you could get some really cool shots and even action shots with cars moving because these have wheels. You need to make sure that you are telling a visual story. You also want it to be connected with the viewer. So make sure you're getting down on the level of the person or the figurine that you're shooting. Because if you don't and you take a picture just like this, and I'm going just right an aerial shot, and I take a picture like this, it's looking at a, hey, look what I'm selling on eBay. And that's not as an exciting photograph. I would love to see your creativity. And again, if you're using little toy figurines of animals, or if you're using a masterpiece that you create, or you're using a car, as you are creating, I would love to see your creativity and what you have thought up. If you can post it on social media, please use the hashtag toy photography WPS. Thanks again. I look forward to seeing what you do. Mm -hmm.